offers a, a huge array of, of personal choice for professional learning. Everything from online classes through a blended learning approach. Uh, the EdCamp days allow teachers choice and voice in what they're choosing to learn about. And then they are also able through the online approach to get those professional learning hours outside of the professional learning structure on their own time and make it relevant to what they need to focus on. Uh, and then everything from PLCs to planning days and the things that take place during the actual school day. I think the part of the professional learning framework that has impacted um, our teachers as a whole is the reflection piece. Learning opportunities that we have provided teachers that there's actually a reflection at the end of the day so that teachers are having to apply what they've learned or relate it to something that they are already teaching in the classroom. So it's not eight hours of a great professional learning session where they've learned lots of different strategies but before they leave um, everyone leaves and forgets what they've learned. So at the end they have a very reflective 30 minute piece where they can actually take the skills that they've learned or strategies that they've heard throughout the day and go, okay, how is this going to fit into what I'm going to teach this week? How does this fit into the unit? How can I restructure what I'm going to teach and how I teach it based off of the instructional strategies that I learned during the professional learning day? Well, I think the new framework that we have for our professional learning has played in a, a crucial role in the transformation at Joy James this year. I think when the teachers came in after the summer and saw how things had changed and how we were doing it, it just kind of reignited that fire and that excitement that they had for teaching. And so I, I think that's because it refocused us back on the most important part of what we do, and that's the, the why. Why are we here? And that's to impact the learning process and, and uh, impact student lives as well. Professional learning this year is much more personalized and takes into consideration their interests and needs and they're either able to go in on P, uh, professional learning days and choose something that is going to accelerate their instruction in class or to get some kind of remediation on concepts that they need to work on with interventions with their students. This year we are able to choose the, the choices that we want that maybe we're wanting to improve on in the classroom that has to do with t-test goals and it's a choice that we get to make. Whereas last year we all went to the same sections and we may have known it, we may not have known it, but we're all kind of just sitting there and you don't pull as much out of it. It's not something that personally relates to you as much. Our teachers and our and our teachers that are leading the ed camp, um, they are in the trenches together. Um, so I think it's so valuable to have the peers teaching peers, um, just with the strategies and um, knowing some of the the issues that they've had and how they have problem solved those issues. So I think that that um, is one huge benefit of ed camp. The teachers find the CISD ed camps relevant to our professional learning. Uh, it's starting with the fact that we get a choice on, on what we feel will make us better teachers. Uh, what dimensions, what threads uh, under T-Test we feel will help us reach our goals that we have to set at the beginning of the year, what our students need us to improve in, uh, and what our coworkers and peers in PLC need us to get better strengths out of. Having other teachers that we can go to that have become experts in those dimensions in a formal setting allows us to learn from people who are now troubleshooting experts so we have another resource on campus. It seems to have inspired us to improve. You know that cliche of um, continuous learners and lifelong learners? Well we always hear that but now here I feel like in CSD especially at Joy James for us it has become a reality and that's because the training that we're doing our teachers have voice and they get to choose what they feel is relevant to them and once it becomes relevant and and real then we truly become those lifelong learners because there's that passion and excitement behind it and so we're actually mastering our craft and that's just really exciting to see as a campus leader as a presenter, I co-presented with my administrator, one of my administrators, and we were very intentional in showing several strategies and doing many lessons, the I do, we do, you do method, and um, having teachers actually practice those together 
and be interactive and collaborative. We also had them, um, we gave them time to plan and um, intentionally implement the strategies that we showed them in the professional learning session. I was able to um, put together presentations, obviously for adults, for my um, teaching peers, that made me think of different ways of presenting material um, to engage different audiences and to um, deliver the material to them. I was able to also go back into my classroom to try what I was going to present and then go and let them know, this worked really well, you should try this. This didn't work so good for me, maybe you can try it this way and give them that feedback as well. Competency-based learning um, looks like this. A teacher is going to go to a face-to-face -face training or possibly a blended training or even an online training. And in that training, they're going to learn different strategies and they're going to have the opportunity to work on a lesson plan and the activities to go along with that lesson plan. But with competency-based, they are going to take what they have developed in this training back to the classroom. And it's going to give them a chance to come back with me and I'm going to be able to go in and coach them on their lesson before they actually teach it and then they're going to have the opportunity to teach the lesson. Our smart reflective process that we developed as a coaching team uh, with the input of directors has really given our teachers a chance to evaluate what they're doing in the classroom. It's the smart acronym and it starts with S and so that stands for select. Uh, so they have to select what instru instructional strategy that they want to improve upon to help uh, raise student achievement in the classroom. And the next one is M, Master the Method, and so they can actually, they get to learn it, they get to test it out, they get to do all the different pieces that, that go with it. And then in the Apply, which is the A section, they actually go into the classroom and practice with the students. And before that, they even get a coaching session as well. Now, the R, which stands for the reflection, I think is the most important piece of this because when they're done with their lesson, they go back and they evaluate what they did, how it worked, and they write a reflection piece that goes along with it. So I think that that part of the puzzle has really made teachers transform their instruction, and that's our last piece of the puzzle, too. And I think that's where it all comes together. And I think Learning that way and taking training that way and actually applying what you do when you go to a training has really changed how our teachers do professional learning in our district. During their PLC time, they are bringing back and, and one of the things that they're doing at the high school is actually kind of having a share out or a debrief after uh, professional learning days and ed camp days. And so they each kind of go around and share the highlights of their personal day with the, the rest of the group. After ed camps, teachers are able to take all of their high yield strategies that they learned. And the great thing about PLCs is that not every grade level has to go to the same sessions. So it allows them to come back together and learn from each other. And then from there, they reflect together about what's coming up content wise in units and see where is the best fit for this high yield strategy so your students can have achievement. We have uh, trending Tuesdays and so um, they're choosing topics that they want to learn more about and it's given us the time to do the research but they're motivated to do the research so that when we try to give little homework assignments which no one has time for homework assignments they'll actually go and do it because they're truly interested in that topic but they've been motivated by this whole process to keep the learning going. The Observe Me Method of Professional Learning allows the teacher to display three teaching points that they want feedback on and the observer to come in and observe and give feedback on those three points. It's not a pre-selected list of um, general points, it's specifically designed for that teacher because the teacher gets to give the points that they want the feedback on. From my Observe Me observation, um, I've gotten some ideas that I did not think of when I initially put together the lesson that I was able to take into the next lesson and take it to a higher level of Blooms and SAMR. So I did a lesson with technology, um, got the suggestion of having the kids go and analyze the videos they made and was able to implement that into um, the next lesson to help increase the rigor.
what Ed Camp has provided for us too is that reflection piece at the end, which has been really neat to watch because it, it's also crucial for the learning process period. Just when the brain has time to stop and reflect, then you retain that information that you, that you just got in the workshop. And then we bring it back to a campus level and we re-meet over it and they share their reflections and we build off of that and gain from each other's ideas that were gained throughout EdCamp. And, um, and from that also, the really exciting piece, our teachers are learning what an important process that is and so they're implementing it into the classroom with their students. So our students have reflection journals, they blog um, through Weebly and different things like that. And, um, and they're even starting to respond to other students. So the learning process is just taken even further because of the reflection element that we've added to our training. Time for reflection is vital in professional learning. When we allow teachers the time and the opportunity to think about what they're doing, the chances of the implementation are gonna increase dramatically. Also, when you're talking about changing habits, when we tell teachers what to do, the chances of those old habits changing are slim to none. But when we allow the teachers time to think about that professional learning and how they're gonna utilize those strategies, the chances of those habits changing over time are pretty good.